are some major causes and effects of air pollution? First of all, let's define the term pollution. Pollution is the introduction of harmful materials into our environment. The world's expanding population has increased the amount of pollutants being released so rapidly that nature cannot dispose of them. So they have begun to accumulate to the point where they are a real and present danger to our way of life and the way of life for other species on this earth. Air pollution in many forms is very visible. You can see the exhaust coming out of a car or truck, the smoke coming out of a power plant or out of a factory smokestack, or even the smoke from a large forest fire. But it can also be invisible. Can you see the gases released when you use a can of hairspray? No, not really. But the gases used as propellants in that can are polluting the air. Polluted air harms many things, living and non-living. Air pollution can cause eyes to burn. It can affect your lungs. Respiratory illnesses in areas with lots of air pollution are not uncommon. Lung cancer is even associated with pollutants in the air. The primary cause of air pollution is the release of gases when fossil fuels are burned. Fossil fuels include coal, oil, and natural gas. When these are burned, carbon monoxide, a colorless and odorless gas, is emitted. This gas is very dangerous in large amounts. Other pollutants released into the atmosphere also have a harmful effect on our environment. They include sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxide, and hydrocarbons. When these chemicals are combined with sunlight, they help to produce smog, and when combined with moisture in the air, they form acid rain. This chemical reaction makes rain, snow, sleet, fog, and hail very acidic. When it comes into contact with the earth, acid rain can damage lake and forest ecosystems by slowing down the growth rate of trees or killing fish. Pollution from one country affects the other countries around it. Canada has complained that the industrialized regions of the northeastern United States have caused an increase of acid rain in southeastern Canada. Canada and the United States have started to work together to try to reduce the amount of pollutants emitted into the atmosphere. Another type of dangerous air pollutant is called chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs. A group of chemicals used primarily in aerosol spray cans and refrigerators. These chemicals are responsible for depleting the ozone layer located in the Earth's upper atmosphere. This layer protects the Earth by absorbing much of the harmful ultraviolet rays bombarding Earth from space. Ultraviolet light is known to cause skin cancer and damages the body's immune system. If this depletion of the ozone layer continues, being out in the sun without protection will be even more dangerous than it is now. Some scientists estimate that the ozone content decreased by approximately 5% during the 1980s. They also discovered a large hole in the ozone layer located over Antarctica. They estimated it to be almost the same size as the continental U.S. The U.S. recognized the dangers of CFCs in the late 1970s and ban their use in aerosol cans. Most industrialized nations have agreed to cut the production and the use of these chemicals by 50% by 1999. Many experts feel that this may not be enough, though, to stop further depletion of the ozone layer. The hole over Antarctica may last for a long time, even if we stop the use of most CFCs today. What is the greenhouse effect? The greenhouse effect occurs naturally when incoming shortwave solar radiation easily passes through the atmosphere to the surface of the Earth. But the atmosphere, like the glass in a greenhouse, makes it difficult for the heat to escape back towards space. The heat is absorbed by the Earth and then radiated back into the atmosphere. The atmospheric gases give off heat, which is partly directed down toward the Earth and the rest back into space. Without this natural phenomenon, the Earth would be a very cold planet. 
Thus, the temperature of the Earth is controlled by the amount of carbon dioxide and other gases in the air. Less of these gases and the Earth would be cooler, but a higher than normal concentration of the gases can help to raise the temperature of the planet. Scientists say that our use of fossil fuels is contributing to an increase in the Earth's temperature. Carbon dioxide, the main gas responsible for the greenhouse effect, is released by burning wood, coal, and oil. Recent measurements show that the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has risen about 30% since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution only 200 years ago. This has increased the Earth's average temperature by one degree. That may not seem like much, but it has made a difference. According to some experts, the next decade is expected to see the warmest temperatures than in any other time in tens of thousands of years. Unfortunately, we may not be able to stop or reverse this warming. If you are saying, so what? Think for a minute. Global warming will have a great effect on the polar regions. Already, large icebergs have broken away from the main ice sheets of Antarctica. If the planet's average temperature should rise, as predicted, between 2 and 6 degrees centigrade, within the next century, the ice caps will begin to melt. This will cause a rise in the levels of the oceans. A rise of sea level of 10 feet would flood most of the Earth's coastal cities and other low-lying regions. These low-lying regions include Bangladesh in southern Asia, the Netherlands in northern Europe, most of southern Florida in the United States, and many other places around the world. The amount of change in the Earth's temperature depends primarily on two things. One, how much carbon dioxide is released into the atmosphere. And two, how fast the tropical rainforests in South America and Africa are destroyed. Why are the rainforests so important? The rainforests are vital because they help to absorb carbon dioxide as part of their life cycle. The rainforests are being cleared and destroyed to provide lumber, fuel, and farmland. These tropical rainforest regions encircle the Earth, forming an uneven green belt located in the tropics on either side of the equator. They are, as you can see, located primarily in Central and South America, Central Africa, and in the southeastern part of Asia. Almost half of the Earth's animal and plant species can be found in these regions. Every day we are losing species that possibly could provide people with new products and medicines. At one time, almost 15% of the Earth was covered by tropical rainforest. Now only about 7% of the Earth's land surface is rainforest. The largest portion is in South America, in the Amazon Basin. Some experts estimate that 2,000 square miles of tropical rainforest, an area about the size of the state of Delaware, is destroyed each month. As mentioned before, many areas of rainforest are cleared for cultivation. Farmers cut and burn sections of the rainforest to clear it for farming. This type of deforestation, or destruction of the rainforest, is called slash and burn agriculture. Cutting and burning the forest releases nutrients into the soil. Most people assume that the soil underneath a rainforest must be very fertile to support such rich vegetation, but they are wrong. The nutritional level of the soil is sustained by the decaying leaves and other materials in the rainforest. Left alone and given enough time, the rainforest could recuperate, but adequate time is almost never available. Even though there are efforts in reforestation, there are still about 10 trees cut for every new one planted. Better land use practices, education, and wise planning may slow deforestation. But some scientists predict that if the deforestation rate stays constant, all the rainforest will disappear in approximately 40 years. Deforestation has also limited the capacity of some regions to recycle rainfall in interior areas and may be related to drought and desertification. Desertification occurs when semi-arid lands become deserts. Over a period of time, poor farming techniques 
and herding practices can destroy grasslands at the edge of a desert. This is occurring in the region known as the Sahel in northern and western Africa. The Sahel is a 200 to 700 mile wide strip of land that stretches across Africa from Senegal on the west coast to the Ethiopian highlands near the east coast. Because of recent droughts and man's agricultural practices, the Sahara is moving southward into the Sahel region at a rate of about four to five miles a year. During the past several decades, sand dunes have overrun an area in the Sahel as large as the state of Texas. What are some major causes of water pollution? Water pollution makes water unsafe for drinking, bathing, and swimming. If fish can live in polluted waters, they may be unfit for eating. Sometimes you can see that water is polluted. In other instances, you may not see the pollution. There may be chemicals or germs in the water that do not smell or that cannot be seen with the naked eye. But these can be very dangerous to man, animals, and plants. Water pollution can come from many sources. Cities can empty their raw sewage into lakes, rivers, and other bodies of water. Pesticides and fertilizers can run off from farmlands. Factories can pour chemicals into bodies of water as waste products. Hazardous waste materials that are dumped or buried on land can filter down into the water table. There is a strong correlation between the improper dumping and leakage of toxic waste materials and increases in such things as cancer and birth defects. Boats can dump trash or spill oil into the water. Nuclear power plants run the risk of releasing radioactive waste into their cooling canals. They can also create thermal pollution by releasing extremely hot water after using the water to cool down their generators. Fish and other necessary organisms in the water cannot survive these temperatures. What's the difference between renewable and non-renewable resources? Natural resources can fall into two categories, renewable and non-renewable. Renewable resources can be replenished. Non-renewable resources have been formed slowly, and once we have used them, they will no longer be available. Renewable resources include air, water, soil, plants, and animals. Non-renewable resources include fossil fuels and minerals. The Earth's resources are not evenly distributed. Some nations, such as the United States and Russia, have a great diversity of resources. Some countries have large amounts of certain resources. Portions of the Middle East have huge reserves of oil. Canada and Finland have vast amounts of forest. South Africa has gold and diamonds. Some nations, though, are seriously lacking any major resources. No one nation has all that it needs. This uneven distribution has contributed to conflict among countries throughout history. Countries have tried to gain control over other areas in order to get the materials they need. We have to find ways to conserve our resources. Several methods of conservation include recycling, Substitution of plentiful resources for scarce resources. Another natural resource that is being threatened, not only by pollution, but also by other actions of mankind, is the Earth's wildlife population. In many places, the habitats of certain species are being destroyed to make way for agriculture, mining, or expanding cities. This was mentioned earlier in reference to the Earth's rainforest. In other situations, the animals themselves are being hunted. Because of these actions, some species are finding their way onto lists for endangered animals. Every year, new species are added to these lists. Some endangered animals in the U.S. include the American crocodile, the bald eagle, the whooping crane, the grizzly bear, the Florida panther, and the red wolf. Worldwide, some endangered animals include the black rhinoceros of sub-Saharan Africa, the Asian elephant, the mountain gorillas of East Africa, the gray whale of the northern Pacific Ocean, and the Australian parrot. Some species have actually disappeared from existence. Two examples include the passenger pigeon 
and the Tasmanian wolf. These and other species that have died off did so because of man's intervention. How many more will disappear within the next year? There are many environmental issues that face us today. These problems are not just problems of one or two countries. They affect the way of life for all the inhabitants of this place we call planet Earth. How we decide to address these issues in the next few decades will help determine the quality of life on Earth for more centuries to come.